Limiter's primary function is to go on your output channel and help you optimize the loudness and various settings to get your master sounding great and ready for release. Step one, load up an instance of Limiter on your master channel and select your preset, such as Loud, Spotify, or Apple Music. After selecting a preset, you'll see the target ranges highlighted on the meters. The goal is to keep the meters within these ranges. Step two, now monitor the loudest section of your track and click Analyze. You'll see a target range highlighted on the input gain slider, showing you what gain adjustment is suggested to achieve your sonic goal. You'll also see target arrows on the attack, link, and ceiling knobs, helping you optimize those settings to suit your music. Step three, set the gain slider within the highlighted target range, then adjust the attack, link, and ceiling knobs to match the suggestions based on limiters analysis. We recommend leaving release on auto for the most musical result. Use this as a starting point and adjust if necessary. And you can hover your mouse over each control for advice on how that control will affect your sound. In just a few simple steps, you'll optimize the loudness of your song based on your selected preset. You'll also tweak the settings to sound great with your music whilst maximizing transparency and minimizing distortion. Limiter gives remarkably clean and transparent results. Specifically, Limiter gives your masters dramatically improved clarity in the low end compared to other limiters. When running a 100 Hz sine wave through Limiter, a market leading limiter, and a 299 euro limiter, we can see that mastering the mixes limiter produces considerably less harmonic distortion. In this test, the harmonic distortion was 20 to 40 decibels less. This gives an audibly cleaner sound for your music. The ceiling gives you precise control over the true peak of your audio. Even when pushing the loudness to extreme levels, limiter keeps your true peaks in check. On the left side of the interface, you'll notice three input sliders. For clean gain, Adjust the gain slider to match the target or to suit your preference. The Y input gain target will show once the analysis is complete and it relates to the loudness suggestion of the selected preset. Monitor the loudest section of your track during analysis as the targets help you optimize the maximum short-term loudness of your track. Adjust the gain slider to sit anywhere within the target range. The input gain target is linked to the attack setting. The shorter the attack, the more it reduces the gain. To compensate, the gain target increases as the attack is shortened. If you feel your track needs more energy and perceived loudness, increase the energy slider to drive the sound with harmonic distortion input gain, which we created specifically for mastering applications. If you feel your track needs punchier transients, increase the punch slider. Limiter's unique intelligent transient detection algorithm will musically enhance the punchy elements of your mix. If you adjust energy or punch after analysis, this will have changed your gain level. Click the analysis button again to reset the target range on the clean gain slider. You can even add negative clean gain if necessary. The attack time, measured in milliseconds, represents the time after which the release of the gain reduction sets in. A longer attack time preserves more transients but may cause audible distortion if the gain is pushed to extreme settings. A short attack time makes sure that the limiting process catches the peaks, but the overall loudness of the signal and presence of transients may decrease. After clicking the analysis button, you'll see an arrow on the attack knob. Limiter analyzes the transients of your audio and suggests a musical attack setting that helps to control peaks whilst also keeping your sound punchy and dynamic. The release time, measured in milliseconds, controls how quickly the gain reduction returns to zero after the signal is limited. A long release time will make the limiting process smooth but can lead to pumping effects since the short-term loudness changes may become audible. A short release time helps to preserve transients and to increase the overall loudness of the signal, but it might cause audible distortion at extreme settings. To enable intelligent auto-release, click the Auto button below the release knob. If auto-release is enabled, 
the release time adapts itself to the characteristics of the input signal and automatically changes based on your audio. This adaptive release time ensures a smooth limiting process even when you go for more extreme gain settings. We recommend leaving the auto-release engaged for the most musical results, as auto-release is constantly adapting to your music. Auto-release is automatically enabled after audio analysis. When mastering a stereo signal, you're working with two channels, the left and right. With the link knob at 0%, you limit the left and right channels independently. This gives more loudness and punch at the cost of adjusting your stereo image. At 100%, the right and left channels are linked, meaning that the limiter affects both channels equally. This maintains your stereo image, but often results in slightly less loudness and punch. You can adjust the knob anywhere between 0 to 100% to get the linking that works best with your audio and loudness goals. When you click Analyze, Limiter will determine the stereo correlation of your audio, giving the similarity between the left and right channels. The link knob will then give you a suggested link amount based on the correlation. The higher the stereo correlation, the more similar the left and right channel are, and therefore, the higher the channel linking can be without compromising transparency. As the correlation decreases, so does Limiter's suggested channel linking to help preserve the transients and characteristics of the mix. A correlation average of 1 will give a target of 100%. A correlation average of 0.4 will give a target of 0%. Channel linking is subjective. There is nothing wrong with setting the link knob to 100% if you wish to maintain the integrity of your stereo image. Equally, there's nothing wrong with choosing a lower channel linking setting or going for 0%, especially if you're shooting for more loudness. These targets are a suggested starting point and can be adjusted to suit your preferences if necessary. When to overrule the link target? If you want a super loud master, set the link to 0%. If you want to totally maintain your stereo image, set the link to 100%. Ceiling is comparable to the threshold of a compressor, with the difference being that no audio goes above the ceiling. This allows you to set the headroom, which is the space between the loudest peak of the music and zero decibels full scale, and account for any intersample peaks introduced by limiting. After clicking the Analyze button, you'll see a ceiling target arrow showing the suggested ceiling knob position to maintain good headroom to suit the selected preset. All music created digitally in a DAW must be converted back to analog before we can hear it. As part of this conversion, a reconstruction filter is applied to round off the stepped digital audio signal. These filters can cause slight changes in the levels of the audio. And this can be a problem for the signals close to zero decibels full scale and can cause intersample peaks. Spotify recommends leaving minus one decibels true peak of headroom for dynamic masters up to minus 14 luffs, and as much as minus two decibels true peak of headroom for louder masters. Similarly, the Apple Digital Master Initiative has introduced a protocol whereby the mastering engineer delivers audio in a format that avoids intersample peak issues by increasing the headroom. Some people argue that intersample peaks are imperceivable and therefore not an issue to concern themselves with. The true peak meter in Limiter will turn red if you surpass the preset true peak threshold, and ultimately it's your choice if you wish to reduce the ceiling. Our advice is to avoid true peak clipping whether you're mastering for streaming or a festival sound system. To the right of the interface, you'll see the dynamic range, luffs, and decibels true peak meters. The dynamic range meter measures how transient your audio is. The higher the number, the less transient your music is. Keeping an eye on the dynamic range reading helps you avoid squashing the transients of your audio through overcompression or overlimiting. The LUFS meter is used to measure the perceived loudness of your music. It displays the LUFS short-term reading for your audio. The higher the number, the louder your music is. Knowing the LUFS helps you get the right loudness for your music, whether you're looking to create a loud or dynamic master. The decibels true peak meter gives you the true peak reading of your audio. 
true peak reflects what the actual peak of your audio would be once it's been converted into an analog sound wave, which happens when digital audio plays through speakers. Keeping the reading below zero decibels true peak helps ensure your audio doesn't clip or distort when played back by the listener. All of the meters have target lines on the sides that relate to your selected preset. Try to keep the loudest section of your song within the target range. This will ensure your track is neither too loud or too quiet for your selected preset. If you breach the targets, the meters will turn red to warn you that an issue has arisen. If you breach the dynamic range or LUFS target, try turning down the input gain. If you breach the decibels true peak target, try lowering the ceiling. Click the meters to reset the readings and colors. Limiter uses true peak limiting to control inter-sample peaks and measure true peaks. True peak limiting is turned on by default and can be switched off in settings. True peak limiting does not perform any sample rate conversion on your output audio. When limiting an audio signal, very fast changes are needed to control the peaks whilst trying to maintain the loudness and transparency. These fast changes can cause distortion aliasing. Aliasing is the misidentification of a signal frequency, which can introduce distortion or other artifacts into the recording. Oversampling reduces aliasing by running the internal limiting process at a higher sample rate than the DAW sample rate. The oversampling settings are set automatically depending on your DAW sample rate. Aliasing most commonly comes about when limiting the audio signal heavily. This is when oversampling is most useful. Also, if you're applying energy, then aliasing artifacts can be produced. Again, oversampling can help reduce these issues. You can adjust the oversampling defaults in limiters settings. Oversampling increases CPU and can introduce a very slight pre-ring due to the filtering process. This can make the transients slightly less defined, though the effect is very minimal and often inaudible. Limiter fully complies with international metering standards. The real-time moving level display shows how the limiter is affecting your audio. It shows input with light green, output in dark green, and gain reduction in white. You can change the scale of the level display in settings to 30 decibels, 20 decibels, or 10 decibels. The level display can also be turned off in settings. To the left of the central display, you have the input meter. This shows the peak of the audio that you're pushing into the limiter. This is post energy punch and clean gain sliders. If you want to maintain some of the dynamic range in your mix, keep an eye on this meter to ensure that the input gain is not constantly driven into the limiter. To the right of the central display, you have the gain reduction meter. This shows the amount of gain reduction applied to the left and right channels. When channel linking is set to 0%, you'll see the left and right gain reduction meters moving independently. When channel linking is set to 100%, you'll see the left and right gain reduction meters moving in unison. By default, the metering, input, level display, and gain reduction scales are turned off. These can be switched on in settings. As with all things in audio, you want to be sure all processing has a positive effect on your mix and is getting you closer to your desired sound. You can click the delta button to show how limiter is affecting your mix. Tweaking the knobs when previewing the delta can help you understand how they're affecting your mix, giving you greater authority and knowledge on how to achieve the sound you're shooting for. Remember, the audio you hear is how limiter's settings has changed your sound. The bypass button will let you preview the before and after results of the processing without latency issues in your DAW. It's impossibly difficult to make fair comparisons between two sources of audio that are different loudnesses. Limiter accurately level matches the bypassed signal to give you a clear representation of the difference between your limited audio and the original audio. Level matched bypass can be turned on or off in settings. The low CPU mode can be activated in settings. This reduces the CP load of limiter by simplifying the user interface. The AB button allows you to quickly switch between two different states of the plugin. This enables you to try a different approach to your audio and see what works best. 
the arrow above the AB button copies the active state to the inactive state. This allows you to keep the current settings of the plugin in the inactive state and make a few adjustments in the active state to see if you can improve the sound. You can then jump between A and B to see which you prefer. Thank you so much for watching. We hope Limiter helps you dial in the best settings to master your audio, whether you're shooting for a super loud master or optimizing your audio for streaming. We're here to help if you run into any problems or have any questions.